Hello, my name is Lizzie. Each week I'm bringing along a different origami fold and I'm doing that to encourage particularly staff in the hospital UCH where I work to take time out to relax, to look after yourselves. And I found out of everything they offer, creative activities, origami is such a lovely way of bringing complete calm and focus just with a piece of paper. And it comes from an amazing community of people who've made so many discoveries. Um, these films are very much though for everybody too. I realise we're all, so many of us are in isolation and it's very hard. I don't know about you, but I think most people are struggling by now. So I'm hoping that the origami is a way of marking time, doing something special, doing something new, getting a little bit excited and I hope it can support you during this difficult time. So I've, I wanted to bring along something a little bit different um, today. I'm originally a scientist and I am a science-based artist, so I mix the two. And I am particularly fascinated by origami because it links so much for me to biology for what's inside our cells. And I want to encourage you to be really quite creative. So to explain, I have been sharing this rather mysterious looking drawing that I've made. And the drawing is actually based on a scientific paper showing the structure of a virus that's causing us so much angst. So this is a drawing looking down on the spike of SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that none of us like. Um, and I was just struck by its absolute beauty. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a perfect equilateral triangle made of three little interlocking pieces. And I was thinking about how origami is all about folding. And in a way, the, the folding at the end of this spike is what will produce variants, different ways then that the, that the virus could maybe stick onto a cell and inject themselves in. So it's a variance in the folding of this that's making the variance, which is obviously um, not great news, but somehow I found creative inspiration in that that's brought me a lot of delight and joy. So I'm hoping to inspire you as well. I shared a colourful wheel. I have basically been experimenting and I really wonder as well, towards the end of this, I'm going to encourage you to invent your own origami variant. So I'm going to show you how to cut an equilateral triangle, which I've just found so lovely to do. You'll need scissors actually for this. And I just have been experimenting, just playing around with how many different ways you can fold a piece of paper. Of course, it's endless. It's a little bit more limited with a triangle, which I found quite helpful because I found that I've discovered all sorts of things. So I have shared 10 different folds that I've played around with and encouraged people to vote. So the top three that came up was the clear winner is this red one. It doesn't matter about the colour, but this lovely little form of little interlocking pieces. Um, this pale orange one and this blue one. And it's rather lovely because everyone's actually gone for very simple structures, which I think is, is rather good. And actually in biology, often things are, I think the simple, strong things work well. A lot of building of things comes around triangles. Anyway, I'm just finding it fascinating, purely well, I suppose as a, as a scientist and as an artist and will encourage your creativity too. So grab yourself some paper and um, I'm going to show you first of all how to make an equilateral triangle. So we're going to do these three folds and then it's going to be over to you to get experimenting. I want you to discover what variants you can make. So I'm grabbing a board to press on and a piece of paper. As usual, I'm going to show you from A4 paper. Maybe you can decorate and colour it as well. So I'm going to make one big square. So I'm going to take the corner and line it up along this edge. Lining it all up nicely. Nice straight line. So it's through that corner. There we go. Good strong fold. I'm then going to remove this rectangle on the sides, so turning it over. And bringing it back. But most of all, I hope these films are a way of giving you the support, a little bit of company, a little bit of encouragement to do something different. It's been so lovely to hear so many messages from people saying how much it's helped them over this time. I'm so glad that is the purpose of this. So we're going to get rid of this rectangle. Little tiny nick. Then you should be able to tear that off. 
Right, I reckon we can make four squares from this. So if we fold it in half again, make it into a rectangle, like so. There we go, good strong fold. And if it's a good strong fold, then you'll easily be able to tear along that line. You can use scissors if you prefer, or a guillotine, but I, I've ended up enjoying using hands and folds. There we go. And folding in half again, we're going to make four squares. I'll try and remember what I did, but actually the ones you've chosen, thank goodness, are relatively simple ones, hopefully for me to replicate. <laughs> so, and so our DNA encodes proteins and it's the way the proteins fold up that give structures and function. And I know it all sounds very abstract, but that's what we're made of, which is extraordinary. And so I've been, I, I think the reason why I keep on getting very excited about these more abstract pieces of origami is I can see the parallels in our body. And it's, I guess it's kind of exploring maths and geometry. So it's kind of beyond any single person. It's just the laws of what's possible there. Mind boggling, but we need a bit of mind boggling, I think, during this time, which would otherwise be a little bit dull. So. So we've got a square, we're going to make it into an equilateral triangle, we're going to need scissors, but just to explain, we're going to do a little fold here, a little fold here, and then we're going to, you'll see, let's do it in reality, and obviously just take our time. So I'm going to fold in half, and I'm just doing a little crease at one end, just marking that line, you see, so ignore the diagonal that just happens to be there, but I'm folding it over and I'm just doing a little pinch on one side. Now I'm going to do the same idea on the other side there. So folding it over and again just pressing it there. So you've got two on um, yeah two little lines around one corner. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to take this corner and we're going to bring it down so it touches that line. Let me see. I have to do it on a flat surface, I'm afraid, but I will show you. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that corner and I'm bringing it down to the line and I'm trying to get right through the exact point there. All right. So it was a square. I'd got that line there. And I took this corner and I brought it down so it touches that line. And so it's coming right from that corner. You have to play around. It's a little bit tricky, but so that's why it comes together. That's it. And we're going to do the same here. So we're going to take this side and bring it over to that line from the corner. Again, I'll have to do it myself on a solid surface. But this is how you're getting to make your equilateral triangle. So you don't need to buy equilateral triangles. Not often that you would anyway. Yep. So each each time I have brought the corner down to that line, to that line, being nice and exact. There we go. And then for the other side, it's really just folding it from there to there. Uh, I find it easier, I think, to turn to the back now. So we're going to lift this up and to the point where it's just nicely through there. So I found this strangely pleasing. I don't even know why I'm finding this strangely pleasing, but I've really enjoyed making it with extra triangles. Uh, there we go, it's a nice shape. Scissors. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could maybe you could tear it, but I've, I've found it myself using scissors at this point. No point in making life complicated. So, just following those lines. And to do it. Oh, I'm doing this four times. Oh well, keep us busy. Got a bit of time to get that right. So we'll start with the simplest fold. That's always the best place to go. There we go. And the simplest fold. It's simple, but it is lovely. Is this is this pale orange one? So, what to do? How to make that? 
so I'm going to take a tip and go to the other tip just making a halfway line because that will mark that middle bit there we go middle bit there uh, same on each side so each time you're making a halfway line and that will be something that you can then aim for pinch there and again a pinch the other side like so so I've got a equilateral triangle which is divided in half on each side I have to say I really struggled with maths at school so it's surprising me greatly that um, that I'm doing this maybe it's surprising you as well um, but it's a wonderful thing it's good to discover these things as an adult isn't it, in a different way so I'm going to take the bottom point and I'm going to aim towards the top in the middle like everything if you just go slowly and patiently on yourself you'll get there There we go, that's one little side, I'll do the same on each. So again, the bottom there, bring it up to that top middle line. Um, there we go. Mm, it's a really nice shape to experiment with. So I'll show you three of the ones I've done so far out of, I think I've done the 11, uh, no 12 actually. I found something else last night, which was surprising. I tried to fold it as I had before and I ended up doing something else so that's great <laughs> it mutated bottom corner um, and I reckon with art we use art often to make sense of things and it's such a strange time it was really nice to find surprising inspiration in obviously what's causing us so so much suffering but to see the beauty in it I think that's that's what science is about curiosity understanding and that does actually bring us to a better place right I'm going to show you how to make that that lovely little overlapping one which is a little bit like a little bit like a, a little box so those three little flaps can they they would kind of fold in over each other like a nice little shape but instead we're going to go to each each of these flaps and just take the side and fold it that line there up to the outside like so and just take your time and be really exact there we go can you see so it was that I folded the flap in and I just took the outside and folded it back and you're going to do this really on each side so the key is that they have to be the same way around so there's a wide bit there so I'm going to have a wide bit now of my um of my triangle again there so okay so i'm bringing it in again and then i'm gonna lift this up and fold it like this so each time i'm having the wide bit on, uh so it's not going to touch the other wide one oh, i struggle sometimes to put all of this into words i really do but can you see then it will overlap nicely whereas if i had the wider end next to there it wouldn't work so, and again the same one and again I want to make sure that the narrower bit is on this side so it's almost like it's got a nice turning action it's a little bit like what's called a tato which I was very curious a friend who speaks Japanese was like I don't recognize that word really but um so I don't quite know the origins of that but it's sort of like a little box or envelope which is really lovely i love the word tattoo that's a bit like that so there's these three little three little overlaps and hopefully just play yourself you will find that they can interlock into each other and then it can squash down and make again a triangle but i love also how it can open up and you can look into that little space inside it's like a little box little lovely lovely shape a very hopefully that was fairly simple that's the simplest one <laughs> so that's our origami variant number one uh let's go on to the blue one next so we're going to make one with these nice little shapes okay let's see how that goes so again we're going to make an equilateral triangle hopefully this gets easier with time so again we're doing a little pinch line there a little pinch line there and then taking the sides lining up against there and then folding back along that edge oh, I am very visual about all of this right I'm gonna 
cut it in half. Maybe you can decorate these things. So it's just two little kind of pinch lines halfway. And then we take the corner, bring it down so it touches the line from that corner. Hope this is making sense. I find this a lovely thing to do. Really curious if you can create your own variants as well. That's him. Maybe you could name it as well. <laughs> so as we've before, folded the sides, turn it down to the back. We just want to line up that corner to that corner. So lifting it up. And I bet you never thought that it was uh, if you had seen the picture before I re revealed what it was about, what it was about. I heard just a few brilliant cryptic comments from a doctor in Brazil who suggested like a spaceship and red alerts. So I think had got what it was about. A virologist and someone else said it looks a bit like a protein structure. There we go. So again, just removing those lines as we do and we'll make the blue one next. It feels rather nice. I'm going to show you three, three sides and and I'll continue making variants for a little while and maybe reveal the next lot of 10 and see what you come up with. So I hope this can be a really nice creative exercise for you as well. It's made me smile anyway. There we go. So again, if we fold and make it this halfway line each time. So just that little pinch. There we go. Again, lift off. Folding over and pinch again, corner to corner and pinch. There we go. So it's marked those halfway lines. And again, as we've before, taking the bottom, bringing it up to the middle. And I found, although you could be letting them cross over each other, I think it's, it tends to be a little bit more accurate if you do each one in turn. So again, point, bring it up to the top. Like so. Um, yeah, viruses really do look like beautiful pieces of modular origami. It's similar principles, they're pieces of engineering, really. You know, that, that scale. Mm. Like little jewels, you'd never think it, would you? I think finding beauty in things helps a little. Makes sense. So you've got a little structure like that. Again, each of these could fold up on each other. But we're going to have a little play with to make it more interesting, to make those flaps more interesting shape. Right. So again, in turn, actually, what we're going to do is bringing that inwards and I am going to bring up the side and I'm going to fold it just towards the middle line and then the same on the other side so effectively it makes a little triangle there so I'm taking the side and bringing it up folding that <clears throat> and can you see I've done a nice strong line there but I've only done it about halfway and I'm going to do the same from this side There we go. So again, lining up about halfway. So you've made a little, you've made little lines there, which would form a triangle. So what you can then do with this, <laughs> realizing how 3D all this is, it's always a little bit hard to show, isn't it? But we've done the folds from each side and it means that you can then very carefully get the middle there to meet on itself. Oh, words again are escaping me. But what I'm trying to do is from... We've folded those sides to make a triangle and then the other side I'm trying to then pinch to become a little flat spike sticking out do you see <laughs> we'll be doing it three times so hopefully after that 
So I pushed it up and then I can push it off to one side like that. Great. And that's what we're doing on each of these sides. So again, I'll just take, take that out of the way again. So pushing that in and we're going to do a line there and a line there. Again, bringing this up, lining it up around to the middle, doing this on each side to figure out what I did for the red one, but I think it's fairly simple. I think in a, in a strange way, these very, uh, very kind of geometrical designs, I think anyone actually, if they spent time with it, would find the same things. It's a little bit different. I think the a lot more the animals are a lot more individualistic to the person, but these I think are almost about the, these kind of forces, which is why I then see in science the same kind of forces too. So I've done that little triangle, and then I've just very carefully started pushing together the sides towards that point, trying to make it a nice little point. And again, then you should be able to squash it down so it sticks up. Lying it down one side and then lying it down to the other one, like so. Great. Right, and then the same on this side, pushing it in, taking the side, lining it up. And doing the same thing. There we go. And then again, I wanted to, to fold it so that it will then go towards the point there. So I guess I'm gently trying to squeeze it and get it to a nice little point, she says. It usually helps when you're seeing it yourself at this point, definitely hardened to a camera. There we go. So hopefully then you can, I mean, this is already a lovely, lovely shape, isn't it? So each of these can lie inwards, pushing this in, little spike, and then there we go. So to make these almost like little petals, all I like did, I think, <laughs> normally I can consult somebody else who's actually invented something when it's itself it's a little bit harder but each of these is like a little pocket definitely bend it both ways so it's got a nice little strong base there and then what you could do is put your finger into the pocket and try and just get your finger in quite well there a little bit harder so small and just squash it down in the middle again I think I'm going to direct the camera down so squashing it down and sort of, I guess, keeping it fairly, fairly wide. So something like that, squashing it down. And that's what you're doing on each of the sides. Like so. Again, you've got a little flap on each of these sides. Bring it back and forth there. Hours of fun. <laughs> Just what's needed. And again, each time this little flat trying to get my finger in so there's no little wrinkle there and squashing it down a little bit harder to get symmetrical but just play around with it maybe it is like a flat it's not absolutely perfect that's all right again that little flat holding it back and forth again your finger in the middle there and pushing it down and hopefully you've ended up with something like that, which is like a nice little box. So it's almost like a little Star of David as well. So I hope that one's worked. Wow, we've been busy, haven't we? We've done two. And we're going to come on to now a third one, which was the most popular, absolutely stood out as the most popular, uh, which really is like a nice little interlocking box. Let's try and figure out what I've done there. It's like a nice little knot and it feels very much like it's all stuck together. No glue. Okay, let's see how we've done that. So again, piece of paper, little tap line there, little tap line there. Cut our triangle and then actually with the fourth one, I'm encouraging you to have a play, make another triangle. 
Hopefully you're getting the hang of that. And uh, see what happens. What can you come up with? What can you discover? Just play. I guess all of this is about some kind of symmetry. So what you do to one side, you end up doing to the other two. But that's pretty much it. Really curious to see what you find. How many variants can be found? <laughs> and of course, with the virus, it's changes of the DNA sequence which encode the protein and proteins are made of up to 20 different little beads it's called amino acids we're going to then fold from this corner to this corner so lifting up that flap and depending what little beads are being used it will affect how it folds up and how it interacts with itself a complex area in itself it, again will be mathematics I'm the biologist originally. But, oh, look, so I've got a bit too far there. Great. Again, I'm going to cut this and then let's figure out how I did this. I got myself to blame, haven't I? That's right. Not blaming anything. Good. Cut that. And I somehow find that viruses can really inspire creativity because they're so beautiful. They've got a vibrancy to them. I'm a bit of a strange person, <laughs> I think in a good way. Anyway, again, we're going to do halfway points. <clears throat> well, it keeps me excited about the world science. And it really has been the only thing that's given us hope, hasn't it? So. Thank goodness. I'm actually here in Oxford, so it's been lovely to feel, you know, good vibes on the, the vaccine. That it's possible is extraordinary. But ultimately, a vaccine all works around your own body having, being able to react, being able to recognise um, and then get rid of it. So it's not so much a medicine as encouraging your own body to do its own wonderful thing. So again, the bottom corner, bring up to that top point. Hopefully getting the hang of it. There we go. Same thing. Bottom corner up to the top. There we go. One more. There we go. Wow, we've done three folds for the price of one. <laughs> There we go. And we're going to actually do the same thing as we did before. This kind of fold where you end up with a sort of triangle, that's the same same thing. So again, bringing it in, and I think I'll direct it down, and lining it up, folding it to that sort of halfway point, and then the same on the other side, like so. There we go. And again... We're going to then make that sort of triangular shape and then folding it so it will be a straight line from the middle of the triangle up to that top point of the triangle. There we go. I think this is what's called a rabbit seer fold. I, I'm not very good at remembering the names for these things. I've learnt really visually rather than from books. We're all different how we learn things. There we go. So again, we're going to do the same thing for each of these sides. I'm just going to move it out of the way. Again, this is lovely, isn't it? It's almost like a little fractal that the triangles are divided up again. So bringing this up, lining it up to make halfway point. Same on the other side. There we go, going to the halfway point, and that rabbit's here, and again I'll fold it back and forth just so it's a nice strong shape, again last one here, folding up, bringing it across, and back again, 
halfway point. There we go. Right. Okay. Take your time so everything lines up well. So hopefully you've got something like this where you push them all down and again it's a beautiful little structure I suppose I didn't share but that was almost an earlier step of this in itself it's rather lovely isn't it right how to make our little shape <laughs> so can you see it's effectively these little spikes locking into the next how did I do it <laughs> Here goes, right, so what I did was I brought one side, one of these spikes, and I brought it upwards in a straight line. So it was down there, one of these spikes, and I bring it up upwards in a straight line. So if you do that as a fold, you're doing the same thing there on each side. So again, here, I'm going to take that flap and bringing it up, straight line, squeezing that side just to make a little crease there. Again, and the same thing. I think that should be enough for us to assemble our little, again, okay, nice straight line. I think that should be enough. <laughs> okay, so... It's then a question, she says, of interlocking one into the other. So, hmm, how did I do it? <laughs> so, one underneath. The other, that's it. So I laid one down and then the next one and then the next one. And that final one, you'll need to tuck it underneath that little flap. So just go one and turn the other and it's formed a lovely little turning structure there. There we go. That was it. I don't know what I'm going to call that but you're very welcome to make as many of these things as you want. Pass it on, transmit it. My idea is to make origami variants. I've made up some. Feel free to pass them on to others and make up your own. So with your fourth square, please make another equilateral triangle and then create your own new variant. If you would like to do that, I would absolutely love to see what you what you make. If you'd like to, obviously you don't have to, but if you'd like to share a photograph, um, I'm on Twitter at Dr. Lizzie Burns or maybe hashtag origami variant um, or on Facebook if you if you join the group which is called Origami to Beat Boredom. Um, Join, no, sorry, it's called Join the Fold Origami to Beat Boredom. Um, and you can share there, uh, yeah, or Instagram. Again, you could use hashtag origami variant. Um, and if you wanted to teach and show us how to do that, then if you wanted to, then maybe we could share that in a future week. I think I may return to this and do threes each time. So let's see what we discover together. I hope that this could have encouraged your own creativity and a little bit of belief that you can find things yourself. I, I haven't been making up so many things, so it's been really lovely actually to find that actually I can discover things, as you can too. You just give yourself time. And the triangle, I think, is a really nice one just to play with. You will start discovering things and it's your own wonderful discovery, which is like science as well. Thank you very much. I hope you've had fun and yeah, enjoyed your beautiful little triangles. Try to see who thought a virus would be so beautiful. <laughs> Look after yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>